its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the next ep of Lori and Alex. Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. She's, uh, she was my former newswoman uh, when I was doing radio in San Francisco, or as I like to think of it when I used to be a big shot. <laughs> yeah, I was your news broad. Yeah. Your, banter, your banter gal. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, she, um, uh, we just sit here and we just banter. We, this is the same kind of bantering we used to do in the morning. I would just say, how was your day, Lori? And then I'd just sit back and sip my coffee, <laughs> you know, and, and you, you, you take off for five minutes. You know. <laughs> well, everything, when I think about it, when I moved to San Francisco, I was less than a year removed from Southern Illinois and the cornfields. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew, I mean, I'd been in college, but it was also in Southern Illinois. So... I was a kid. I was in Candyland in San Francisco, and every time I would go out walking every afternoon until about ten o'clock at night in San Francisco, and never run out of things to impress me, to educate me. Oh, to am- at that time, it was the most beautiful city in America. Oh, it was yeah. un- unbelievable, unbelievable. And, and, and things it, were popping. You know what was my hometown? But yeah. when I left it and went to New York, places like that, I never thought of it as a great, beautiful town till I came back to it. And then I went, oh, really? wow, I left this? I know. I, you know? Yeah, because yeah. um, you used to talk about you know it being your hometown, and I thought, well, I can't imagine having a city like this as a hometown. Because mine's 7,800 people. You know, I mean, it's uh, you can literally walk from the north to the south in 15 minutes and east to west as well yeah you'd have to have that you know clip that that race walking clip but you could yeah. do it yeah and you know and yours i mean you grew up there but i think we tend to take for granted at least initially what we grow up with and then appreciate it mm-hmm. after we've been other places you know i just noticed with this in the last week's interview my background well, is I, it i made up a special background for you you did. I feel so. Oh, what a special. Huh? Wait a I minute. I feel so special. Oh, hold on a second. Wait a minute. I got to go find it here. I got to be able. Wait a minute. Where do I? How do I? Lori's background. I don't know where I, how I get it here. Hold on a second. Should I, if you could email it to me, I could just carry my phone around like this. Oh, here we go. Time. Virtual background. There we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here's the background. Back- I, here's the background I wanted. There we go. When you said background, I thought, leave out the 90s. <laughs> See, that's my, 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 this is my Doctor Who background. There. Oh, oh um, you spe- we interviewed Doug Adams, remember? Did no, you, um, no, that was not, that was not uh, Doctor Who, though. The, no, that was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Hitchhiker's Galaxy. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nicest yeah. guy we ever had on that show. He was a sweetie. So, I think Brits, as a rule, are less pretentious. Unless they're being pretentious and they want to be, but as a rule, the except for the the uh, aristocratic class, I think Brits they have that dry sense of humor that kind of comes mm-hmm. off as humility. Well, Douglas Adams had a sense of humor second to none. I mean, mm-hmm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is uh, absolute uh, ambrosia, you know. Yeah, and he mm-hmm. was just a funny, just great guy, just great guy. We lo- I loved him. I literally loved him. And then he died. I know. And um, he was promoting another one called Dirk Gently Pet Detective. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Uh, Dirk, yeah. No, Dirk Gently. Uh, I can't remember the second part of the title, but it was, he was like a, a space traveler or something. You know? Yeah. 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 In fact, the guy who sold us our house had a Doug Adams tattoo. I mean, it didn't say Douglas Adams, but it was one out of the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, some reference. Yeah. 
great. I think the great thing about doing a morning show like that is all the great people you get to meet. And the ones that you don't expect to yeah. be great. Yeah. And love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what, that's what I like. People that surprise you. And those who you expect to be wonderful who weren't. Right. Who were just um, what, for whatever what, reason. One that I remember that comes to mind is Steve Allen. Oh, he was what yeah. a boring pain yeah. in the or what a what a what a rug. He had a rug, yeah, yeah. Remember, but it was like. But he would, like, you know, he, he what he did, did what, what what Steve Allen would do, and I heard this from other people too. Uh, and and you should be warned if you're ever going to do a show. And Steve Allen, no, he's dead. Uh, Is he? But but, but for it. he literally comes in and wants to take over the whole show, but not just him doing stuff but like oh that mic should be on and this mic should be on and my, you yeah know, he was just very bossy uh-huh yeah, so he, he knew was. everything about where everything should be in the proper place for it and i found him just dreadfully boring yeah he was very let me tell you how it's done you know i've been doing radio well then he would then he would well he would start going into some of his television bits schmack, schmack, you know that kind of crap <laughs> I know. It's like, come on. Yeah, dude. I didn't. I didn't oh. like. I didn't like him. Who else did yeah, I like? Do you hate it? Who did you hate? Well, you hated Mark Maron. I did not like Mark Maron. Of course, he and I, I, unbeknownst to me at the time, he and I were both struggling with drinking problems, and that may have contributed to it. I felt he was disrespectful to you. Well, you had the greatest uh, question of any guest on that show, and you said to Mark. Uh, who we know knew because he was, you know, he was a comic. Uh, uh, by the way, Mark, is there anybody in Hollywood you haven't used yet? <laughs> well, he just, he dripped of, you know, that kind of opportunism. I mean, I you can smell that on people. And he's done very well, and I like watching him in his acting roles. And I think if I had to narrow it down to one pretty likely thing, it's because he and I were both struggling with alcohol. Well, I didn't like him either. And neither yeah. neither did Sam Kinison. You know the story, really? don't you? you, you oh, it, oh, I don't know the story. Well, uh, at the uh, comedy store in L.A., Mitzi uh -huh. Shore had a house on the hill right behind the comedy store. And that's yeah. where she would put comics up if they didn't have a place to stay or live or whatever. And uh, you could stay there. Okay, especially if you were playing at the comedy store, you could stay there. That's nurturing. Sam Kinison so hated Mark Marin that one day he went up and peed all over his bed. <laughs> That'll get your attention. <laughs> he hated Mark Marin. Just hated him. Yeah, well, what I thought was his, uh, blat his blatant opportunism was what bothered me. And I felt that he didn't respect the show, like he would not even listening. There was the one thing that I remember that galvanized me into going to do the manager's office um, was that Marin, you were talking to someone on the phone and it was going fine. We were having fun and we we're establishing a, you know, some a topic of conversation. And he was just reading the Chronicle like he couldn't be bothered to join the conversation. And I said, dude, you're here and you're here as a guest. So pay some respect to what's going on. Just focus. Yeah, that's you know that's why we have you here. You know. Yeah, and and that's what and I'm sure if we met now we'd probably get along fine. Um, but uh, I don't know that. But you know that was the I remember the, the incident. kind of the kind of asshole person he was. I don't think that goes away. Really? Well, I think yeah. that he's he's weathered. He seems to have gotten nicer since he's gotten successful. And that's what happens to opportunists. They get to the point where they don't need it. And when they shed that, you can see that there's a there's a somewhat worthwhile Well, I look, I, I give people in, in that profession, in comedy, um, uh, 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 the right to be a little bit that way. Because uh, it's such a cutthroat business that you're right. always trying to make it. Okay, you're always yeah. trying to seize on every opportunity possible. Right. And so that makes, that kind of makes sense, all right? I don't hold that against somebody. Yeah, but, I guess I'm But he, to he was just it. overall an overarching asshole. Yeah, you I know? mean, I don't mind 
being manipulated um, mm-hmm. if, if you're really good at it. But if I can notice it, I will write you off so fast. And by you the way, if you're, if, you, if you're finally listening to this, Mark, uh, can I be on your show so I can get publicity for this one? <laughs> Um, you know, and I don't sweat stuff. Well, hey, and there's me taking an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I wish him well, and I really do like him in acting roles, you know, so that that's good. Yeah. But, I mean, opportunism, if you can see it, then that's not a very good opportunist. <laughs> you know, just well, don't people, make it The positive. people that I see on shows, and they've, they've done okay, like um, um, uh, Kevin Pollack. He's uh, he is a good example. Yeah. yeah, he's got so gracious. You weren't around. You weren't around at the time when I was at KMEL, and he held a roast for me. Oh no! Yeah, he put together a roast for me. Yeah, yeah. I I, just, I always liked Kevin. He as years went on, he kind of became a little distant. And then the last time I met him, he was kind of it was kind of like, yeah, yeah, you used to be my, my friend, didn't weren't you? You know. Uh, yeah, well, but, um, but but I love, but still I I'm happy for his success. Yeah, he seems to have gotten. And it's uh, not a gr- it's, it's not a great success, but it's a comfortable success. Oh, I you know in Maisel, I thought that that was a, such a good. He played that role, Moishi to the T. Mm-hmm. I thought he did really well at that, and he was good in a few good men because he didn't overplay it, he didn't underplay it. Yeah, and uh, well, anybody can be better than Tom Cruise. <laughs> That guy is still around. He's still doing his push-ups, though, know, because he doesn't look. At least he doesn't look like a joke. You know, he's. I mean, he, sometimes the roles he takes are. I, mean, I yeah. wonder about. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, but Kevin Pollack has gotten more gracious and more gracious. Like at least in the interviews that I listen to. I was just As, thinking. I was just thinking that there's always. Is there a plane he hasn't jumped out of yet? I mean, you know, in movies. <laughs> But then I was yeah. thinking, when I thought that for a second, I came up with, and this happened a couple of weeks ago, fat folks, after you've read this, is the uh, the guy for the head of uh, the Wagner Group, who uh, yes. uh, you know died in a plane crash yesterday. Now this is weeks later, folks. Now, so you know, yeah. probably other revelations have come out. But you know, the minute a enemy. Of Vladimir Putin dies in a plane crash. Yeah. And they say the ex- it, it it crashed because something inside the plane exploded. Yeah. <laughs> you go. That give me a it, it's got to be it's got to be Vladimir Putin. You know, yeah. <laughs> he has to have arranged that. And doesn't Vladimir know when he does something like this, everybody goes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what's he think that people? Oh no, they won't associate. I think it's the lies we tell ourselves. <laughs> that, that's the biggest lie anybody has told themselves. You know. Well, yeah, is they well nobody will notice. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, speaking of which, I think those Russian oligarchs. They got. I think I might in my next life be a Russian oligarch. I mean, you know, I might have to overcome some initial bias, like, you know, the, a white chick from the Midwest wouldn't be a good oligarch, but I think that's a bias. So I, I'm willing to try it. it well, you're the willing to be an oligarch in Russia. Well, first, right. first, they, first you have to go through Vladimir Putin, who helps you become an oligarch. Do I get a Learjet? If he would just give me a Learjet right off the bat, I would never have to deal with it. You again. want your I own Learjet? Is that your... Is that your thing in life now you want your own Learjet it works for Kid Rock he said that, they, that they'll they take his kicking and screaming take every cent he has just don't take you know I, I, I remember the company we had in, uh, in Topeka uh, which oh, was yeah. New, Tech, New, New, Tech. New Tech well New Tech at one point uh, bought themselves an airplane because they were in the middle of nowhere right they were in Topeka Kansas and you had to go to St. Louis to catch an airplane but if they could have a plane land in, you know, so they, they bought a plane. Okay? Yeah. The company exactly. could afford it. So they call me up and they go, hey, meet us at the airport. We're going to take the plane and we're going to go down to Monterey and have dinner. So I Rock thought, on. oh, well, got, got the chance to be in a private plane, right? So yeah, I got that the plane work. and the first, you know what I did while I was there? When it took off, I held my, I had a briefcase. I held the briefcase above my head. <laughs> and and the reason I did it was I know there was no woman who was going to come by and say, "Would you mind putting that under your seat?" Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, 
I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. So I did everything in the plane I could possibly do. They would never let me do. Oh, smoke? And I had stopped smoking. Now, are they are they everything they're cracked up to be? I mean, well, here's what happened. We went down, and uh, then they uh, they had a limousine meet us at the. Uh, so much money they had. They had a limousine meet us at the uh, airfield. We got in the limousine. The limousine drove off to this restaurant. And I can't remember the name of it now, but it's one of the finest restaurants in Monterey. And we Ooh. had a really lovely, lovely dinner. And then we go back and we're, we go to the plane and the pilot says, I don't think we can take off. There's brake fluid uh, leaking. We'll go to AutoZone. And we can't, <laughs> and fix, and we, and we can't fix that. So what happens? Um, you know, I figure this is going to be one of those kind of things where I go to dinner in Monterey, get back in the plane, go back to the city. I'm in, at home in time to go to sleep to do the show the next morning. Right? Yeah. And yeah. Then, then I can tell this wonderful story about how I... So we we get down to uh, we get down to the plane. It's got a leak. They can't use it. So they hire five limos to take you to the city to, to take us from, back from to, back to San Francisco from Monterey. I get home about five about three o'clock in the morning. Oh I think man! In time for about three hours sleep. Oh man, those yeah. are false near pretenses, man. I would <laughs> yeah yeah because when, when you. Uh, and as far as uh, limousines go, they used to kind of be a big deal, too. But uh, like Rob Snyder's line was, "What? Look, I got eighty bucks." Yeah. <laughs> like when you know, when someone hires you know, hires a limousine for their prom or something. Yeah. Proms are okay, I think. Proms and limousines. Are okay. Proms and limousines. It, 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 uh, pro, uh, limousines go with proms. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, like boutonnieres. What did I do? What did I do with my prom? I can't remember my prom. Now, did you go to Tamil Pius? No, I went to no. Dra Drake High School. Drake. Okay, because I met two hilarious chicks, sisters from Michigan, on the plane or out on the cruise, and they one taught at Sacred Heart, and one taught in the one taught uh, anywhere el elsewhere. They, I want. It's both for private schools. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how this is going to come around to to, to uh, Tamil Pius High School, but go ahead. Yeah, but no, but she mentioned she knew the salaries of everybody at every school in Marin County, and Mount Tam. She said the principal makes like 140 thousand, but if you really want to make money, you become the principal of a private school. So it's a little educational inroad. Oh, but really? Oh. We went to Drake Hospital, we, Drake, and we did a live show, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like we got, the producer and I got together with your mom, and we found like photos of you in high school. You were a cutie. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I think it was my my anniversary or something of my. It was a reunion. A I reunion. Think, a reunion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I went to the uh, let's see I went to my fortieth reunion and I. Pulled up to the uh, boat where it was going to be in a boat that went out around up in oh where was it? Uh, not Santa, uh, Angel not Island. Santa, no, not Santa Rosa, but another city. Anyway, there's a there's a, a lot of water there, so they were going to take a boat <laughs> out. So I get out of the car. I'm I'm at, huh? I'm at live 105, and I get out of the car, and I look at the people getting onto the boat, and I immediately get on the phone to my girlfriend at the time. And I start screaming into the phone, they're nothing but old people. I know. When you they're find nothing, the way. And, and I got back in the car and went home. I didn't go to my reunion. Because I really? didn't. Well, you see, one thing, it'd be one thing if it were like somewhere and I had to deal with them. And then when I didn't want to deal with them anymore, I just, you know, say goodbye. Yeah. In this case, I'd have to jump in the water. You know, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't. When you're on a boat, you're stuck with these people. That's true. That's very true. That's why I like a cruise that's not huge. At my thirtieth, yeah. At my thirtieth, I went to my thirtieth, or it was my thirty-fifth, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the thirty-fifth, and uh, I was there, and I was just standing there, and uh, somebody walks up and says, "Hmm, aren't you Alex Bennett?" Yeah. And you said yes. Yeah, I said they, yeah, 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 kind of. I said tonight I'm not Alex Bennett, but normally, yeah. normally <laughs> I am. 
I am I Alex Bennett. Radio. You know. So. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That raises a good point because when it becomes, when you're faced with irrefutable evidence mm -hmm. that you're aging just like everybody else, one is aging, I'm aging just like everybody else, it's hard to accept. You can look at a picture and make all kinds of adjustments and rationalizations in your head. Mm -hmm. I look pretty good. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but then when you are, when to be called to something like a reunion where you look at these people and you know you're kidding yourself, that yeah. you are aging well, just like they. Well, my ex-wife, who's now my ex-dead wife, uh, Ronnie, um, She's hyphen it. <laughs> asked, me, asked me once we finally were talking to each other again if I would take her to her uh, reunion. It was for, she went uh -huh. to, she went to, uh, she didn't go to Drake. I think she actually went to Tamil Pius, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. Yeah, but anyway, it was a, it was a, the, the, you know, a dance and party and reunion and so on. And I went to it and uh, I, I it's the thing that hit me was I looked at all the people in this room. You gotta realize that we're at a prom, right? We're at a party for people who graduated the same year from a school. Right. So if you're gonna, say, your you're gonna say they have an age, there's a pole here and they're on either side of that pole, but not that far, maybe six months apart. Uh huh. And then you look at the people in this room and they all look like different ages. Some of them That's look 20 true. years younger than the, than the rest of the people in the room and others look 20 years older. Aging doesn't have a, a look to it, you know? No, it doesn't. It depends on maintenance, you know, how well you take care of yourself, um, your habits you develop along the way. I don't care. I, don't, I, I disagree with you. Look, I never took care of myself. And look at me. You're just, I know. <laughs> you are GQ, baby. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, the body can come back from a lot of things but you have to do some research. And that's, we have no excuse not to do research with the internet. And so, I mean, you can undo some of those bad habits. Believe me, I've had to research. I think, I think what I'm gonna do when I get this lots of money and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have all the work I can done on my face, okay? All the work possible. So that when I'm dead and lying in the casket, they go, oh gee, he was so young. Yeah, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> But that and that is a bruiser of a reality too. When I was, I always read the obituaries from my hometown, Calvert, <laughs> Calvert Funeral Homes. Yeah. So because I got in the habit because in San Francisco, if a, a schoolmate of mine died or if their parents died, I could at least call or send a card. Yeah. And uh, it's a small town, and so I'm going through and I'm reading somebody's obituary and I realized that no one at this point or thereafter will read my obituary and go, oh, she was so young. And I couldn't decide. Well, no, here, here's, whether... the, yeah, here's the part I can't stand. You go to a funeral and, and you say, uh, you walk by the casket and somebody says, gee, doesn't he look great? And I have to say, no, he doesn't. He's dead. <laughs> right. You he, know? He's inanimate. No, I don't care what you do to him. He doesn't look great. He looks dead. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but his tennis game has suffered a little. Uh, I don't know if he ever got around to doing it, but Paul Krasner, the, the realist writer, the writer, the yeah, editor of I The like Realist, yeah. um, um, told me that when he died, he has it in his will that they put clown face on him with a little red nose. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then tell everybody you can come in and look at the body, but don't say a word to anybody. <laughs> and everybody would suddenly look at the casket and break out laughing. I guess. Said, That's what I want him to do if I'm dead is laugh. Yeah. Well, what would you have? What would you have on your uh, on your tombstone? Oh, I mean. Well, I know, I know already. I mean, it, I've said it for years. Uh, I, I, on my tombstone, I want to read. I told you I was sick. That's a good. That's good. I would just like um, most has which is i may be pronouncing it wrong it's french it's m-o-t-j-u-s-t-e it means the perfect word the perfect word really? so basically you're letting anyone who sees it write your epitaph and oh and this is going to make us a million dollars to make money in our sleep or like billions um the do-it-yourself funeral like where you get to conduct your own funeral you get to pick a lot of people plan their own funeral but you get to do it 
you get to record it. Like, hi, folks. Oh, you mean do it, do it here, before you're dead? Do it before you're dead. Do it and put it on. Let everybody you know. come and do their little eulogies and all of that. Well, you could do it that way. That'd be a great way to do it. Or you could just put it, you know, on a file, an audio file, mm -hmm. and pause for like, you know, or you could lead people well, in I song. Figure, I figure we're, we're running a little bit over here, but this is such a good discussion. I don't want to ruin it <laughs> by bringing it to a close. Um, uh, you know, if if I I just want people when I'm dead to uh, um, say nice things about me, but I've decided I've suddenly realized I don't think if I died tomorrow anybody would show up to my funeral. I can't. I, I would. I, would you come all the way to Florida to dump me in the ground, or is, if Marjorie has her way, turn me into a crispy critter? <laughs> Yes, I would even buy a mini urn to keep some of your crispies in, your cracklings. Oh, oh, really? Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, but, but, uh, we should take this idea on Shark Tank, though. You and I on Shark Tank. Okay? And we just give them the idea of a do-it-yourself funeral yeah. where you welcome everybody, you know, and you could relive a couple wacky adventures with folks that you yeah. might that you anticipate well, how much there. money have you made so far on this endeavor nothing because all our clients are dead that's right yeah. We, yeah we were ahead of our time <laughs> God, you know i just so enjoy this with you I me just, too it babe. just is so refreshing uh because i can't begin to th i didn't make a list but if i made a list of all the different stuff we talked about in the last 20 minutes it would probably be about 10 15 things Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I love. And it's just because one thing goes to another, goes to another, and you're chatty Kathy too. You know, you just, <laughs> you know, you don't. I, make, I know I make Kathy Kathy Lee Gifford look mute. <laughs> yeah, imagine this woman when she was drunk and having to work with her, though. You think she doesn't shut up now? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that was actually alcohol was one of the few things that helped me calm down just a little. <laughs> Well, some mornings you but, fell asleep. Some mornings you didn't get up, actually. Not many. That was really good. You know what it was? I got I to gotta say this about you, Laura. You're one of the few people, uh, because I'm very much against alcohol. It just bothers me when people yeah. are drunk and so on, you know? Yeah, um, it, does me, it does bother me now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, you could do anything, and I would not have had you fired. You know, I, I forgave a lot of stuff. You know? Yeah, you did. And and yeah. it's because you were that valuable to me, and I liked you that much, you know? Well, I appreciate that and, more than you know. And we didn't talk a lot in the last couple of years because we didn't have this. But now that right. we have this, God, this is fun. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this is it. Thank, this is our new drug. <laughs> thank you, Lori. How long was this one? Oh, this one was 26 minutes. Okay. Oh. Bye. Bye, I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? I, uh, I, this is Alex. I'm back again, uh, I think, uh, for a time. Oh, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I went through. <laughs> Ridiculous. Just ridiculous, uh, but uh, we're here back again, and uh, let's uh, let's bring some people here. We've got about four people waiting to come on here, uh, so we'll just uh, we'll just uh, zoom them on here, and let's see here. There they go, and there's uh, Charlie, and uh, let's see. Brian Neary is yet to. Brian, where are you? Are you there, Brian? Ah, oh, there he is. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can all we can all fake uh, um, a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there. Anyway, how are y'all, everybody? Doing good. Okay. Good. good. I'm glad you're all doing better. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Alan. Uh, he sent me a cane, and I thought, ah, who's going to need this? And then my leg got worse and worse and worse and worse. And if it weren't for that, uh, that cane, I probably never could have gotten to the doctor. You're very uh, welcome. Yeah, so thank you. You're um, welcome. It was a lifesaver. And yeah. um, 
you know, it had a hole in it. That's what. It, no, it had. It was a lifesaver, and we, uh, um, because uh, as of li- a week ago, Tuesday, uh, literally, I couldn't walk. I mean, I had turned into an utter cripple. And we went down to this knee doctor, and he shot some crap into my knee, and. Within 24 hours, it likes I like I had gone to Lourdes and I'd been healed by the Lord, you know, and uh, I could walk again. I'm not walking as well as I did beforehand because I think there is some injury there that I don't know about that you know makes the leg weaker. I hope but you're still using the cane. I'm not using the cane right now, but I'm not going out. You know, oh. why I'm not going out. No, no. I mean, if you go out because yeah. it'll steady you. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what the temperature is out there? I hear it's a balmy ninety degrees in New York. A little more than that. Yeah, it, it's horrible. But it, it isn't. You know, again, it isn't the heat. It's the humidity. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, the humidity just drives me up a wall. You know, so it's Trump's fault. Yeah. So anyway, so here's to you. Uh, plus, I'm just, I'm tired all the time too because uh, this thing really made me tired. Uh, it, it was like, uh, let's see, how many days? <clears throat> I did a whole week after it was. A, I, I didn't go to the doctor till a week after I had fallen on the leg and twisted it or did whatever I did to it. And in that intervening time, I mean, it was so it, just painful and exhausting mm. that I just you know. So I decided last week that I was going to take the week off. And you know something? I could have taken another week off. In fact, I could have taken another year off. But, oh, you would miss us. What are we going to do? Jeez, I got to spend time with the family and all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, really. yeah that would be horrible. They, they thought something was wrong. I said, why are you spending so much time with us? <laughs> it happens when the internet goes down. They're they're nice people. I found out, but you know, yeah, yeah, it's family. But anyway, so uh, I I've I've been you know get, trying to get over that, and I'm just tired all the time. I'm tired because the house isn't hot back here because we air condition it, but in mm-hmm. the front, it is just unbearable. The humidity is just unrelenting. Now I don't have to, I don't have to tell Charlie this. I mean, Charlie's going, <laughs> you got it easy, you know. Mm-hmm. But because I know that down in that part of the world, it's n- it's not only hot, but it is humid. It's just unrelenting humidity, and uh, so uh, that that's what I've been, you know, that's what that's what's been going on here. And I can't go on out and try and walk this off a little bit and try and get it, the leg going again, and all of that because I, you know, the weather. So I may I may go to uh, the the doctor said to go to physical therapy, you know, do a little physical therapy. So I'm thinking of doing that, you know. I do that all the time. You do that all the time, yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't have Pam to do it with like you do. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I see the thing I don't like about physical therapy is it's a medical situation in which uh, it's, a me- it's a medical situation uh, in which uh, they give you homework. <laughs> and I hate that. You know, I want to say, okay, we'll do this all here. Okay, I'll move my legs, do this, do that. And they say, now you go home, do all of these twice a day. Wait a minute, well, hold on a second. I don't want to go home and do that. I want to go home and lie in the bed and watch TV, then come back to you and exercise. You know, so. I don't know. Hi, hi, Steve Fox. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but up on, on the uh, Gabnet page, I for the time being put your, a link to your uh, to your channel. You did? Yes. Yeah. If you go to gabnet.net right now, over on the right hand side of the uh, of the page. You will see a link to your Steve Fox's. Uh, what's it oh, called? Oh, that's that's cool of you. Thank you. Yeah. Not only is there a link, but when when Gabnet.net loads, it automatically starts playing the music from your link. Does it really? <laughs> my, on my side, it does at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't on mine. But it's nice music. 
Well, yeah. Alan, you've been blessed. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, you know, I'll keep it up for a while. I don't know how long, how long I'll keep it up there, but, you know, I just figured oh, we'd do it for you. Yeah. You know, I saw that it was easy enough to do, so I'd do it. So I did. I, God, did I wish that. I had a closet like the closet behind Steve Fox that isn't cluttered with all kinds of crap. <laughs> oh, you, you should see this place. Yeah, I'm observant. Huh? No, I said I'm observant. No, I got stuff all over the place. I mean, not this room, not the one that's back here. Right. But that's just a green screen, you know. Right. You got a bunch of DVDs and things back there, right? Yeah, right, right. But if you saw either side, I mean, it's, you know, it's, this, is, this is where we put all my sins, you know, the <laughs> sins of my life here. Anyway, um, so what's what's been happening? Anything? Anybody want? You know what? You know what happens? I'm sick of this. I mentioned this on the Monday show too. I, you know, Marjorie listens to MSNBC all the time. She just lies there mm -hmm. in bed. She vegetates because she's got a bad back, and she watches MSNBC. Oh, I like Nicole Wallace, and I like her. This woman and that, that Katie Tour, and you know Tour. Um, who only became a broadcast to get even with all those kids who played with the name Katie Turr at school. Uh, and uh, all I hear, every now and then, I just hear, I miss every other word that's coming out of the TV set because I'm in here, but I can hear the TV set and I hear Trump, Trump, <laughs> Trump, Trump. I thought one time I'd, I'd spend a whole hour watching MSNBC and how, I see how many times they mention the word Trump in a given hour. And they're making the same mistake they made back in 2016. They're getting this guy elected. You know? Basically. Huh? Basically, because even on KQED, same thing. I could just sit there for a whole shift and it's Trump. 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 Yeah, the same thing. And everybody thinks that they're hurting Trump when they're doing it, but they're not. Mm -hmm. I, I like that people are looking into the 14th Amendment that says that if he's, uh, I don't know what it says, ask Charlie. What do you mean? 14th Amendment says that if, if you ever participated in an insurrection or any kind of treasonous activity toward the government, you cannot serve in a, as, a, as an elected official. official. Really? That's what Trump yeah. did in, on yeah. January 6, 2021. Yeah, but he hasn't been found guilty of it. You don't have to be found guilty. It no. just says you had to participate. It doesn't say right. you had to be found guilty. That's right. Mm. And there are actually Republicans that are bringing this up now. Some, hmm. of, some of the states are considering leaving him off the ballot. Off Trump. the ballot because of that. Really? It'll, it'll be fought in the Supreme Court. They all admit that, but... And he will know. claim that he's being denied his American rights to run for office and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And... You don't have the right to do an insurrection. No, you don't have the right to do an insurrection, but that's really something you kind of got to prove. You know, did he cause the insurrection? I, I, I think he did, but that's just he me. He caused it. He just has to participate in it. He participated in it. You don't have to be the leader. You have all you have to do is participate in it. Did he participate in it though, technically? Sure he did. He refused to send the National Guard for three and a half hours. That's participating in it. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying you see, I'm just I'm I'm not I don't I want all of that to be true. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with the arguments they're gonna throw back at you. You know. Well, I mean the fourteenth amendment is pretty clear. Yeah, so. yeah. So you say Republicans are doing this? Yes, Republicans are doing it. See, I just... You know, Fox it, News has brought that up. Yep, absolutely. The, the thing that I question in all of this is um, his participation in it. Um, we can question whether that was participation or not. I mean, it can be argued. It, 
And, fake, I mean, fake, what, fake electors, he definitely participated. Well, can they in. stop him? But can they stop him from running for president in a, in a primary or in an election uh, only because they've accused him of that and thought that he did that? And we all agree he did that, but that's you and me. But that's not, you know, his people. They won't agree Let's, with that. How about, if, how about if we look at the the leader of the Proud Boys, some Latino guy who got sentenced to 18 years yesterday and was not even there. So if he wasn't there and he can get sentenced to 18 years for the insurrection. Actually, didn't he get more than anybody else has gotten so yeah. far? It was 22, <laughs> 22, 22 yeah. I don't know. Somebody huh? got yeah. 22 and yeah. he got 18 and I don't know. Well, what this so guy, one guy wasn't there. Well, yeah, but what he was doing is he was organizing it. Yeah, you know he may not have been there, but he was organizing it. And so that's where Trump's at too. Yeah, well, Trump the organized the fake elect electors. The fake electors. Yes. Yeah, yeah that, but that's another story altogether. That's hmm. not the. That's still part of the insurrection. Hmm. They tried to overturn. You see, I, it's not that I don't election. want any of this to be true, and I don't want to uh, hope that uh, any of this will come to bear and uh, and uh, keep him from running from off for office but okay yeah I, you know i i also don't want to be able to see a situation in which everybody's arguing with everybody else and nobody really knows what to do with this you know well, some of the secretary of states it like the secretary of state of michigan She's yep. a lawyer, a criminal lawyer, I think, and she said that they're talking about leaving him off the ballot. I think and Colorado letting him, is another one. And, and letting, yeah, and letting, you know, it move up to the Supreme Court. If he's off the ballot, he can maybe run in 2028 if they agree with him, because in, you know, 2024 he or, or next year he won't be able to be nominated. Who would they put on the ballot? Who would they put on the ballot then? Yeah. All the other Republicans. There's no law that says you have to have a Republican running. For can't, you write in, can't you write in a name? Anybody can write in a name anytime. Well, I, I mean, he if he's, if that happens, he's going to say it's a witch hunt. Everybody write my name in it, and then it's the same thing. But, but yeah, that can happen. But that, that doesn't mean he's going to get elected. To, you have to realize the power that Donald Trump has with morons. <laughs> exactly. No, really, I'm serious. Yes. No. That he can lead them around by their nose, and they're happy to do it. Yeah. You know. And, and those and those morons have one way of thinking, and they're thinking to vote for Trump, and they don't say anything that is going to deter them from doing that. They that, that he has the the biggest core and base of, of people who are going to vote for him, and like you're saying, they're morons, and they, you know, they. They don't. They don't understand all the stuff that's going on and, and well, why he's being know, charged. All hear, stuff. So hear, they'll still vote for him. I hear them say things. Like, I hear them say things like, uh, "Gee, um, uh, you know, he, um, uh, Donald Trump, is the best president we ever had." Yes. He did so much for this country, and that's I'm trying to what? think. I'm trying to name one thing he did for this country while he was president. Ask one of those morons that question and see what they, they can never have with. an answer. They, they can't. They don't they, have an answer. There is no answer. Gas wasn't that high. The economy is terrible now. They're, they just rent, they <laughs> ramble off the same things that he says all the time. Yeah. No facts. It's a witch hunt. Oh. Yes, the, witch hunt. the gas was almost four dollars a gallon before COVID. It only dropped because people quit driving for COVID. But but Trump will say it, and then it's it's. His morons say that's that's the yeah, truth. Yeah, but you know, here's, here's the thing about Donald Trump, and I was thinking about this the other day. He goes out and he gives a speech, okay? He gets all his minions together, and they're all there. Yeah, 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 lock her up, whatever you think you chant, okay? And uh, he gives all these speeches, and uh, uh, he says all these things, but there's nothing in the speech about what he's going to do for America if he's elected president. Not one oh. word. It's exactly. all about they're trying to get me. They lo they're trying to lock me up. They're trying to shut me up. They're trying. I'm doing this for you. But same, if, wait a minute. Aren't me. you going to tell me what you're going to do to, you know, bring down prices? Just give just that. Just say what you're going to do. But it's there's the same. 
Hmm? Same. I, I bet you if if he his next public thing when he's running, you know, all these speeches, they're the exact same speech he's been doing. Then these guys keep saying they're going to take Steve Fox and my cars away and it's going to be all electric and they're going to take all of the classic cars away. They're going to just take them. Biden's going to take them away from us. And that was like, <laughs> I'm go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? I mean, the fact is that uh, um, he just never in his speeches tells us what he's going to do to make things better. Okay, what are you going to do, Donald, to bring prices down? Okay? For all those coal jobs he was going to bring back? Mm -hmm. Where are they? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. He had four years to bring them back. Four Not years to, br to bring back what? The coal job. Remember in 2016, he was promising all those people in West Virginia he was going to bring back all those coal jobs. Hmm. Okay. They're still unemployed and they have no yep. health care because of him. They, they show these memes. They show like some, and no offense to anybody who has a trailer in the trailer park, but he shows like, you know, like a really run down, you know, tr mobile home. I mean, just windows knocked out and all that stuff. And it has a Trump flag on the outside. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, as Trump is just giving more money to all his rich friends and, and you know, tax breaks and all this stuff and charging these other people more, these morons still keep voting for him. Oh well, God. the only thing that these people know about Donald Trump is he was on TV. Yeah, that's it. You know, that's it. Plain and simple, you know. So. And he keeps stealing from everybody, you know, never surrender and then the whole, you know, make America great again. He keeps stealing these lines from other people and... Well, That's make not, America great again was Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Exactly. Yeah. But these guys don't know that, and, and they're they they yeah they wear the hats and all the stupid stuff. And it's like you ask any of those guys who you know what other prominent president said that, and they have no idea. Well, if you believe okay, if you believe that Ronald Reagan was a great president, which I think you'd be stupid <laughs> in thinking, but go ahead and think it if you want to. Uh, he was out to make America great again. If he was that great a president, I guess he made America great again. So nobody needs to make it great again. They need to do something else with it. He cut, so as I've told you guys before, my mom passed away when I was young, when I was 13. So mm -hmm. I was getting $450 after high school a month. And as long as you kept in school, you would get that. And so I was going to college, just started, just graduated. And then, yeah, Reagan cut all that stuff. Yeah, no, mm. I don't think he's too great. No, he never was. Reagan's why I have to pay five or six hundred dollars every year on my Social Security. Before oh. Reagan, so you were not taxed for your Social Security. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that's hey, man, that's, that's, that's I don't. I don't pay taxes on my Social Security. Yes, you do. I do. Yeah. No, you don't because you don't have. Well, if you have outside income, you sure as hell do. That's because of my umpiring. I have to pay tax on my social. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Oh. Yeah, I don't have outside income. Well, I mean, Ooh, I get I get social the security. Stuff I, do is volunteer. I, I, I get social security, but if you make over, what is the ninety-seven thousand? What? No, if you make over fourteen thousand dollars in outside income, you have to start paying taxes oh, on your social okay. security. So that's how that works. Yeah. Hmm. And hmm. I get twenty-five thousand dollars just on my pension. And then my umpire on top of that. Can I ask you a question? Is it, uh, you know, age 62 is the first year you could take it, and then, what, 70 is the the max or something like that? Maybe 67 now, but... 70 is the max that you you have to start taking after age 70. So after 70, are you still taxed? Yes. If you make money outside your Social Security, you make more than... Let's, say you've, let's you, say you've got you stock, and the stock off. makes a lot of money. You're gonna have the, the amount of money yeah. you make total added to it is the social security. Now, if all you make is the social security, probably gonna be okay, I guess. Yeah, you, know. you don't pay taxes on that. But my pension alone is enough for me to make. He, here, here's security. the best part. I am about okay. to inherit money, hmm. and uh, I, uh, my business manager gave me the good news. He says. You know, you're not going to have to pay taxes on that. Wow. It's tax-free. Right. 
And the reason it's tax-free is because it's money that this person had that he already paid taxes on. Mm -hmm. So consequently, when you get an inheritance, you don't have to pay money on it. The only thing that I know of that, taxes that, on that changes on that, that is if you I inherit I think there's a limit, limit, like fourteen million dollars or something. Well, I'm not. I didn't inherit fourteen million dollars. <laughs> you better not. I, 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 I not leave us here and you get fourteen million dollars. I think it was thirteen. I, I think it's thirteen million. So I think I'm safe. So. <laughs> We gotta you make know, it to New York. You die. Well, that's a death tax that the Republicans are always crying about. You inherit money, you gotta pay taxes on it. And every every time a Republicans get in power, they raise that limit before you start paying taxes on it. Yeah, well, well I mean they're doing something good. Yeah. But uh, you, you yeah, don't... yeah, if you're Walmart or somebody, yeah. Yeah. So the I, rest I, of us doesn't affect us at all. So, I'm sorry, but if, if if you pass away, Alex, and we find out there's thirteen million dollars in your account, I'm gonna be really mad at you. Just let you. Know. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that'd be my ultimate fuck you to you. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, there's a letter for you, and there's gonna be. Oh, by the way, here's my bank account. F you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know these things go into probate, by the way. And I, my fig, I'm figuring I want to be able to live long enough to get it. But this probate's gonna—I don't know how long it takes. You know, you can avoid probate. You Look, can't avoid the taxes, but you can avoid the probate by having a living will. He had yeah. a living will, huh? He had a living will, and oh, really? you have to pay taxes, right? You no, right. you That's have to—you you have to go. It goes into probate if it's oh, if the estate is worth more than fifty thousand dollars. They have some commercial on the radio all the time and saying about how if if somebody dies, then if you inherit their house, you have to pay taxes on the current value of that house. So then there's something the lawyer says, oh, come to me and I can show you how you don't have to do that before they die. And also. Well, I would imagine if you inherit property, which is fluid, OK, mm -hmm. uh, and you and maybe maybe they bought the house for a certain amount and then it matured and now it's worth more. But there have never been any taxes applied to it because it never got sold. Exactly, yeah. See, if it got sold, then that lump of money is there, and you, that they then paid taxes on that money, and then that money goes into the will, then that money is, of course, non-taxable. But if, uh, if it, you know, it's all, you know. But it, it, it I, you know, I, it, I said to my business manager, wow, that's terrific, you know. A lot of, lot of non-taxable money there. But I wonder if I'm going to get it before I drop dead. You know, That so. always sucks, doesn't it? You get a big inheritance when you're, when you're older, and you're fortunate you're able to travel. So. Well, I mean, my feeling is I'm going to spend it all. Not something, I if, I, if I got this when I was in my 50s, no, I would have put it in the bank and saved it and invested it and done things with it. But because at our age, we're just gonna we're just gonna blow it like crazy, you yeah. know. So, yep. Whatever. So you, know. you could do that whole funeral thing that uh, Laura and you were talking about. Yeah, that was cute. <laughs> yeah. What was, I, was I, I? I did. I, I forgot what we said. What did we say? Oh, you're the one that's gonna be uh, doing the whole service. So yeah, when, when, you already yeah. pre-record all this stuff, and so you welcome the people to the funeral. And <laughs> well, I say, okay, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, we knew one one guy at work was dying, and um, he had pan I had pan pancreatic cancer, but he he was uh, going through something, and he actually had a, a big celebration before he passed away, and he went and talked to people, you know, sure talked to people and tell them what they meant in their life, his life, and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Crazy to watch that, you know. So. Well, I always thought it would be it would be kind of nice to go kind of slowly, so that you can go say goodbye to everybody. I mean, I read about people like uh, Ingrid Bergman, Audrey Hepburn was another one yeah. who did it. Who went know. back to their home countries and went back to say goodbye to everybody. Wow. You know, you also have time to make peace with people. You know, um, so in a way having some time before you die to do to kind of put a period on your life yeah. it's not the worst thing in the world you know I don't know it depends on how sick you are yeah well 
Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's true. But uh, who, who, do, who, who did I see was dying of pancreatic cancer? Oh, God, I'm trying to remember the story. Oh, well. Oh, by the way, I heard it. I was watching on YouTube. There are endless videos of Rodney Dangerfield. Mm. And I got to tell you, some of his stuff was just downright hilarious. A lot of it was. You know? yep. And yeah. the best one I heard in the last week was he said, uh, uh, my wife left me for my best friend. Now I don't have a wife anymore and I don't have a dog. <laughs> I, I, I like the one Isn't that where a great he says, joke? Where I like the one where he says, my wife comes running in the house and she's all excited and asks her what's happened. She says, somebody's just stole my car. And he said, did you get a description? She says, no, but I got the license plate. Oh, come on. I don't think that's it's as funny as, as I lost my wife. and, it, and, and It's and, her car, sorry. Of course she would have a license plate. The, the screen froze. It did? <laughs> no. <laughs> or he's got another one. He says, my wife ran into a tree. I said, what the hell? How did you miss this tree? She said, it's not my fault. I honked first. Well, this is a tough crowd. <laughs> no, no. Rodney's not telling it. Yeah. That's you're right. I picked a joke. That, I picked a joke that I could do. Oh, let me adjust I picked my a tie. Jo- I I picked a joke I could do. You know, and that was a fairly simple one. You know. Well, the, the two jokes I lost I my wife to my best friend. Now I've lost my wife and my dog. You know, that's it. It's perfect. Perfect joke. Uh, perfect what joke. about when he says my dog wants me to meet them? To mate him. No, I'll never mate him. Let him go through what I go through. Oh, come on. You know, I, I have a, a You know, suggestion. I tell these jokes to a lot of people and they laugh about it. I have a suggestion time. to you. Oh, what's that? Stop telling jokes. Stop telling jokes. Yeah. <laughs> on, on Alex's show, nobody has a sense of humor here. Well, no, I mean, if you're going to tell jokes, you have to have timing. And what you lack is timing. It's like what's in this closet back My here. My girlfriend used to say that all the time. <laughs> what? What? That I, now you can't remember what you said. Timing, timing, that I lost timing. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, anyway, so uh, <laughs> let me see here. So, we're talking. So, anyway, I hear Trump, 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 Trump all the time. Uh, 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 and you say it's the same over there, KQED? Pretty much, yeah. And they all, BBC saying it all they over all the think they're working at a great end here to, to defeat Trump, and they're not. No, they're working to get well, ratings. They think it'll give them ratings. Well, actually, MSNBC has great ratings as a result of all of Trump's woes. You know? So, so hypothetically, when you look at all this, with everything that's happening, what do you think the outcome is going to be? Well, uh, I, I don't really know. I can't say. Okay, you know, I don't, I don't know what, how it's going to turn out. But I do think that I'm worried about Biden hmm. and his age factor. People are really making a big deal out of the age now. And they really probably shouldn't be because, number one, it's ageist. Okay. Uh, and... Being ageist, it, it 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 it's just not to say that he's not capable of being a president because of his age. Yes, he he stumbles. He how can I put it? He he doesn't. Uh, he kind of stutters when he speaks, but he always stuttered. He was a stutterer when he was younger. It's it only gotten worse as he's gotten older. Actually, you know. Uh, but the question is, can he do his job? And apparently he can. You know, he goes to work every day. He does it. He does a lot more than Trump did for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he takes it seriously, and he's, he's doing the work that's got to be done. And he has lowered prices, and he has the gas prices are better, and a lot of things are better under him. Although nobody will say so because they go, oh he's so old he isn't can't do any of this he's just doddering you know. But then again you know what's the age difference between Trump and 
Biden. About three years, I think, something like that. Yeah. Years. That's Hello. <laughs> yeah. And, and but I mean, Trump is a, is an egotistical moron. And he can't speak a coherent sentence either. Oh no. So, oh, he can't. No, if he would, he would give better speeches. Yeah. You know, he can't even read a teleprompter. I mean, you know. Well, when you're the smartest man in the world, I keep But I, I just think that, that the problem with, with Biden is its perception. And I don't know if we're going to be able to get past that perception that the American public has of him. But the, the press keeps, pr keeps talking about Biden's gaffes, and they, don't, they ignore all the Trumps. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'd just like to keep showing that video of him going up on Air Force One with toilet paper on his show. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, or him trying to stumble down that ramp and almost falling on his face. But I think we've got enough of stuff with him that could be shown end to end that would make him yeah. look dumb. Or when he, or when he's drawing on a, on a, on a, a weather map. Yeah. yeah, and and the way the storm's going to go, it's going to the east, but he says it's going to go to the west. Can we maybe we just make a deal with the Republicans? Trump won't run, and Biden won't run. Do the little pinky <laughs> thing, and then we just start fresh. Mm -hmm. So who have we got? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got to tell Newsom to step up. Stuff. <laughs> well, you get the. I think the Democrats will grab Newsom. There's no question oh, yeah. about it. Yeah, and I think yeah. the Republicans grab DeSantis. Uh, I don't think so. I think he's proving uh, that he does not have he. What he doesn't have, okay, is, uh, well, he has nothing, actually. No. <laughs> but what he doesn't have is a likability factor. Right. He, there's just something very unlikable about him, and it's not because I'm a Democrat and he's a Republican. He's just not likable. There's nothing really likable there. Mm -hmm. So what do, we, what do we do? You know. So Keep I, him in his, uh, huh? Florida. What? See, so he should stay in Florida. Well, Florida deserves him. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, but uh, uh, he, he, he's just not, uh, he's not likable. Um, and then you got this, what's his name, Ratsaswamy, or what's his name? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> that, that moron. Jeez almighty. You I'll know. pardon him. Huh? Uh, yeah, he'll yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. This is the guy that Phil thinks can beat Biden. That that Phil's gonna vote for. Oh no, he's already mm. uh, he's already on the losing end. He's already started losing like crazy. Yeah. You know. I said that to to uh, Phil, and he says, Ah, what 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 survey are you listening to? <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna beat Trump. He'll be better than Trump and everything. I don't know. He's got a lot of problems. No, I hope he runs against Biden. He would lose horribly. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I worry about, and then I worry about one other factor, uh, and that's Kamala Harris. Um, I just don't know that he should be running with her again, because uh, Amer because America doesn't have a lot of faith in Kamala Harris. Now I don't know why. I don't think she's that bad. I don't know why. Either. You know. But she she does not have a good. He doesn't have a good Q rating. Let's put it. He that didn't way. have her as an attorney general in California. If you did, you might understand more about it. Was she good? No, not at all. She was horrible in San Francisco, and then horrible for the state. And but for Biden, she's she's multiracial. Multi race. Multi race. It's not what I want to say. Um. Uh, but uh, she it's a woman and um, you know she's a lawyer and so I mean a lot of lawyers have made part yeah, but we can't, can't we come up with somebody else who's more likable I mean she, she's carrying too much baggage you know I would agree and that and the mm -hmm. problem is if you got a, at his age you've got a vice president and you have to say well you know if worse, if something bad happens, which it could, the, backup. the power yeah, yeah. possibilities increase with Biden's age. Oh yeah, yep. that mm -hmm. will she be able to take over and run the country? Now, I, you know, I, that I don't know. I don't have the confidence that she could do a great job. No. Nope. All right. So he should have somebody he's running with 
that you feel, hey, you know, if Biden goes, I feel comfortable with that person. Uh, like, for instance, I'll tell you, best thing ever happened to this country is when Kennedy died and LBJ yeah. became president. There was nobody more ready to be president of the United States than LBJ. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the country felt a certain confidence with LBJ. They didn't go, oh, God, this moron is president. Do, yeah. do you think do you think Biden would lose votes because he kept Kamala? I I think that the argument would be, listen, he's not young, he's old, he could die in office. There's always that possibility, or become incapacitated in office, and the replacement is Kamala. Now, can you live with that? Could you live with it? Better than Trump. Yeah. Better than Trump is not the answer I think I want to hear here. Let's yeah. go Better back than to any of those Republicans. I mean, well, how about how about who, who took? That, but was it George W. H. W. Bush that turned that took another idiot? Uh, you know, from Indiana. What's his name? Tato Hale. What? Dan Quayle. Oh, yeah, Potato. Dan Quayle. Could you imagine him have been president? He had a good grasp of the English. Well, let's language. see. He was president when uh, he was vice president when who was president? H.W. Uh, Bush. H.W. Bush. H.W. Bush. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was insurance against assassination. I yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. No shit. I mean, Quail. You know, Quail. Certainly, nobody ever figured that he would be easily become president. You know. Uh, and uh, after it was all over, what did we ever hear from Dan Quail again? Is he alive still? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's still, still alive. Well, I told you I, this, I told you my 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 story. I've told this a dozen times that during the Loma Prieta quake, when the marina was in ruins, uh, who did uh, who did they send? Uh, who did Bush send to shore Quail. us up and make us feel good? Dan Quayle. Quail. <laughs> and so I I go out my front door, and Dan Quayle is like a block down the street. And he's standing on this big box looking at the at the ruins. And it was a good opportunity because that particular building had completely fallen to the ground. And then he turns around and he gets into a car and then I'm standing there on the street corner and the a car goes past us and some people are like booing it because they can't stand Dan Quayle. Hmm. And, and uh, somebody in the middle of all of it, as he's turning the corner, yells out, look, Alex Bennett. I was there, but it wasn't me. Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> yeah, my friend and I, I told this story too, my friend and I hopped in our, uh, my friend's Yugo. My friend had a turbo Yugo. <laughs> so Yugo, we up, a turbo yeah, Yugo? Uh, I had a little scoop on the hood. So we went, we went up to, uh, yeah, my business closed. He was up the street. I went up to his house and he said, let's go up the city. So we went up to the city. Oh, uh, Berlin game, they had a collapse, like not collapse, but the elevator thing at one of the hotels. Then we went up there and the best thing about the Yugo was the parking was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Parked and then we cruised around. We went through one barricade around one, but and we saw Quail. Quail was there. Yeah. I've got to do something. You guys to talk to each other. I have to go get my phone because I got to show you what I got today. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. It's in the other room. A rubber tip for your cane. No. <laughs> so Brian, are you coming to the show tomorrow? Which one? Alamo. No. Oh no! The da- no 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 no. No, the Denver oh, one's on Sunday, but tomorrow. Alamo's tomorrow. Alamo. Is that uh, what Phil's going? Uh, four to eight. And, uh, send, so me, send me the info because I'll be coming back from. Is that at nighttime, right? Yeah. Last time I checked, the Alamo was in San Antonio. No, no. You're right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that was the Alamo. No. Send me the info because I'll be in Lodi tomorrow, and then uh, I'll be driving <laughs> home. And uh, yeah, let me let me see. Maybe I'll stop by on the way home. Okay. But Phil's not way. playing yeah. his card till Sunday. I know. I, but there's Willow Glen has a huge car show on Sunday, so I'm oh, going to. Oh, oh. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm gone. I thought you'd either start talking sports or about cars, so I was right. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. cars. <laughs> it was cars. We were so infatuated with that Yugo. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's this new program that we downloaded today, and it's called Citizen. And what it does is it tells you in your neighborhood the crimes that are occurring. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah, that's all I need to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it a new app. It's well, let's see here. On Madison place. Avenue, there's a report of a break-in at a construction site going on right now. And then uh, let's see here. Report of an apartment break-in. That's on uh, West 111th Street. That's just right near us here. Report what about missing dogs and missing cats? Oh wait a minute! Shots fired. <laughs> Oh, on Lenox Avenue. Uh, let's see here. Police activity. Police are responding to a report of a person who uh, may need assistance. Uh, I want, uh, let's see here. Um, a 9-11 caller reported an unconfirmed incident at 1940 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. Is that close? It's near I'm, in, I'm in 1925. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they have, they have a ring. Uh, so ring has like the area. All this stuff happens. So, yeah. but most of it is like missing dogs or found dogs and found cats. I don't know how these dogs get found all the time. Two found Yorkies, a random guy checking doors at midnight in Woods Apartments, um, and then then whenever people see like a bunch of police, they start posting on here like, "What was happening at Skylark and Wren? I saw many police cars. So I drove away. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, missing cat." Mm -hmm. Miss cats, missing cats all the time. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I don't know where it has it now, but earlier in the day, they had the fact that there were 29 people in my neighborhood who had police records. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Right. Wow. I mean, this is you very, that this would is, be confidential. This, this is very depressing. No wonder you, know? you stay home. Huh? Yeah, and if I want to pay 24 bucks a month, I can get the full thing. I can really feel like I've been... And I see on Citizen that they've urged people to evacuate a burning building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gosh. Yes. And let's much. see here. They say that there are 1.5K users within 0 0.2 miles who are using this. So anyway, we're, uh, we're having a report of an apartment fire. Yeah, okay. Downstairs in the building. A pedestrian hit and run reported on 7th Avenue down, downtown. Uh, but anyway, so it's called Citizen, I, and you can probably get it right for your own uh, neighborhood. I'm, gonna, I'm downloading it as we speak. I used to have it. It was crap. But I'll try it again. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's depressing. It makes you realize, you know. But anyway. Oh, listen, for people who uh, use a GabNet, uh, the um, on-demand isn't working. Uh, what isn't working is the thing I use to get it together, coalesce it, and make what we call an XML file that then tells you where to go and blah, 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 blah. Uh, that that s system isn't working. I pay for it, and it's all of a sudden, it's just, uh, I can't, it won't log me in. So, uh, and I have no idea why, because I haven't changed anything, okay? Two days ago, it was working. So, And Jack Bishop will be on tonight. He was not on last night. And when I looked over and I saw that he wasn't on, I called him and I said, why aren't you on? And he said, because I read something online that you weren't, that Gabnet wasn't going to be on today. Oh, is that weak? And I had went. a long talk with him on Monday, and he said, yeah, yeah no show Alex Monday. said we're not on. What do you mean? I didn't say that at all. That's what he told us. I told him, where did Alex say it? Because I looked at your Facebook page, and yeah. there wasn't anything there. It wasn't my it. Facebook page, and it wasn't on gabnet.net. So he said, well, I'll find it. I could go ahead. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't exist. No, I, 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 he wrote me and said, should I take Monday off? And I said, that's up to you. You know, it's up to you. And that was all that I had on a discussion on the weather. But Tuesday, of course, he's always on on Tuesday. So anyway, he'll be on tonight, I'm sure. Otherwise, he'll hear from me. Um, fire him. <laughs> yeah, fire him. Right. Dock his pay. I'll, I'll dock his pay. I'll dock his pay. Yeah, that's what we'll do. 
Anyway, so he's, he's going to be on tonight. So, And uh, he never did send me that thing that supposedly was posted that said it wasn't we weren't going to have Gabnet last night. Uh, he must have. Been, yeah. yeah. Sure. You know what I don't understand? You want to talk about morons? I mean, we, we have a lot of morons. They're the Trump morons, you know, the, the those morons. But you know who I think are the bigger morons? Anybody that decides to go on a plane over a three-day weekend, mm -hmm. why? Isn't it just easier to stay home? <laughs> You know, and if you want to go away for a three-day weekend, eh, take a Friday off at work and yeah, get on a plane Friday. when nobody else is trying to get on a plane. But all these planes go bad at the same time. And TWA, I think, had an outage of computers. They had to, they had to ground all their planes for a couple of hours, you know. Huh. So, I mean, come on, folks. Let's have some sense about this. Like I don't even want to. I don't even want to get on an airplane. Period. For any reason, I'm going to have to, but I don't want to. And if I do it, I'm going to do it on a weekend that nobody else is going on airplanes. Yeah. So, how's everything at work, Steve? <laughs> yeah, it's doing all right. You know, just keeping it going, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, what do you do now? You announce. I'm announced. What, what, yeah. What do you announce in particular? On the, uh, you know, when you listen to NPR stations, um, I'm the announcer on there between the shows when like Fresh Air takes a break and then I come on saying, you know, support for KQED comes from and talk about whatever else is coming on is the show. Is most shows. of it, is most of your stuff scripted or do you ad lib it? No. Well, I'd love to ad lib it, but the weather is the only thing you could ad lib, but that's about it. But yeah, it's all scripted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you have so important. much time to do it because you're, I mean, you are at the second of. Oh, really? Yeah, it's this exact time all the way through. It's an art five. Yeah, but but you're not like the guys that used to work here in New York in the uh, announce booths of the TV stations. That only once every half hour did they have to do anything, and all they had to do was go, Channel Seven, New York. <laughs> A booth announcer. And then, yeah. then they would they would leave the booth. They would go down to the bar because there was a bar on the floor of every radio station because they knew a television station. And uh, then they would get a little drunk. They would go back up and they'd put their hand to their ear again at the, the, on the hour and go, Channel 7, New York. And then they would go back down go to the back. bar. And well, oh. I always used to found, uh, find very a lot of fun was to watch these stations sign off at like two in the morning when these guys were pissed drunk. Oh my God. And couldn't even get it out. Uh, this is Channel 7 New York. Here's our national anthem. You know? Yeah. Well, who was the guy on Channel 44? I mean, he was the one that was... Oh, uh, 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 his name was... I'm trying to remember his name now because I had him on my special. And he was he was the voice of Channel Forty Four. Yeah, yeah. KBHK TV Forty Four, San Francisco. Channel Twelve on uh, cha yeah. Ch Channel Twelve on most systems. Cable Channel Twelve or something like that. Cable Channel Twelve on most, on most yeah. network. Most, yeah. yeah, most cable. Yeah. Network. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name because uh, 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 Darwin Gillette. Oh, that's who it name. is. Darwin Gillette. Ha! Huh. Ah, I remembered that. I don't have, my brain hasn't gone that bad. Uh, but oh Darwin gosh. Gillette was the voice of Channel 44, and I used him in my special as a talking toilet. Channel 44 here in the Bay Area? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Now You'll have to up, post that sometime. You no, know, oh, I would post it, uh, and I have. Actually, it's up somewhere. I think I put it up on YouTube. Oh. As a matter of fact, I. I call it the worst television special ever made and it was it was terrible it was just horrible it was a and i did a couple of shows for channel 44 which were comedy shows and they were fine they were good they were really good but then we decided to do one which was just 
me. Oh, okay. Whatever. And it, it just didn't work. Uh, you know, I hired a comedy writer, and he just wrote some terrible comedy. Just horrible. And, was it a comedian? Hmm? Was it a comedian that wrote that? Uh, uh, Martin Higgins, his name, Marty wow. Higgins. Yeah. Uh, and and it, just, it just didn't work. It was just horrible. It is just embarrassingly bad. But what happened, what came out of it was is that I realized that um, there was one segment in the show where I was just walking down the street and talking to people and doing stuff like that, and that worked, mm. okay? Uh, and then, uh, and certain things that I did in this, thing, and so I then went on and started doing this stuff for Channel 7 on the log on TV and that's where I won my Emmy was for because I, I kind of figured that I could do certain things that would work huh. and that so what came out of that were some of the <laughs> things that would work uh, and uh, actually I wouldn't I won my I won my sports Emmy because I did that kind of thing with yeah. sports and I, I did it, and I, I won the whole, the whole special one, actually. And we all got Emmys. So. That's how I have my sports Emmy. And, oh, I'm, not giving, and I'm not giving it back, either. <laughs> uh, before we leave, uh, we need to recognize something in this group today. We need to recognize uh, Charlie's new favorite shirt. Oh, let's see here. What is this? So, say? Yeah, so he posted on Facebook that this is his favorite shirt. So yeah. we need to recognize it today. Well, I got today. Read it to us. I'm in the fitness, fitness beer in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like. Oh boy, you're, you're kind of changing the nature of your shirts. They used <laughs> they used to be scientific and really smart. That's scientific, huh? That's scientific. <laughs> I imagine it is. Uh, yeah, one thing. It's like me. I'm on a seafood diet. I only see food I eat. I don't think that's how the joke goes, but oh, okay. on that note, oh my god, yeah, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. Oh, that's yeah, the that joke. Good too. You don't have to complicate. Phil told it to me. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't say that. He didn't say it. Oh, okay, I haven't heard from Phil in a long time. Oh, uh, uh, shh. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll come on tomorrow night. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyway, hey, listen, uh, I may as well start playing the theme. Why not, huh? Yeah? You can't hear it, but I can, and so can the audience, and so we're playing it. Anyway, listen, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you very much, Jeff. Good having you here, as mm -hmm. always. Uh, Alan, uh, you, your timing is impeccable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it it looks looks somewhere. <laughs> With the cane, it was... You know who has the best timing I've ever seen? Barack Obama mm. has oh, yeah. great timing. Amazing, timing. just amazing. When it tells, when it comes down to being funny. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, Brian. Good seeing you again. We miss you. Uh, yeah, I hope you missed me. I, uh, yep, did. And I'm, I'm kind of glad to be back. I was feeling a little tired tonight, and I'm now I'm feeling invigorated. Uh, Charlie <laughs> Wallace, do I look healthy, everybody? Do I look healthy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You look beautiful, yeah. I don't look unhealthy. I don't look unhealthy. I don't look like Mitch McConnell, do I? No. Okay. Uh -oh. And Steve Fox, always a pleasure to have you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave. See, there I went. A big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. There's our citizen panel for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection. Listen to him closely because I don't know if I'm going to be able to post the shows tonight. Uh, but in any event, uh, it's been good having you here, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop, you can call him, by the way, on Skype at uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I will. Okay? Good night, everybody.